To open the file once you've downloaded it, you simply two finger click open with Adobe Illustrator. Now it might take some time, but there it is. As you can see, my uh, artboard is portrait. We want it to be landscape and I'll show you how to do that. Before we do that, you've got to make sure you've got all the tools. You may not have the tools you need to do everything. So up in the top right corner, there is a uh, artboard uh, workspace uh, menu and change it from essentials, which is the default to essentials classic. Okay. And if you lose any of these toolbars, sometimes you might accidentally delete one. Okay. Then you can come back and click on reset essentials classic, just like that. All right, now, hide that if you wish. If you come down here to artboards and click on the artboard icon, then you can switch it quite easily to landscape. And also double check, sometimes it might default for whatever reason to Google Pixel, uh, just because of the size of the artwork. And we wanna change that to A4. Okay, so A4 landscape uh, and that's looking pretty good the next thing we want to do is make it as big as we can to fill the screen so holding down the shift key grab one of these little uh, bounding box markers and drag it up and just drag it down if you don't hold the shift key it'll warp the image okay so make sure you're holding the shift key as you do this and make him as big as you can without out going outside the artboard boundary once you've done that, we're going to start drawing using the tools. So click on layers, or which is this one here. That's the layers button. In between the eyeball and the blue line, there's an empty box. It says toggles lock, editable when blank. That means when there's nothing in there, you can work on that. If there is something in there, like a lock, when you click on it, then you can't do anything. And you might see the little pen with the no writing uh, icon there. So we need to make a new layer over the top. So click on create new layer and now you have layer 2 which we can make our drawing layer. Mr. Strong is a good one to start with because he's a rectangle. So we're going to start with the rectangle tool. M is the hotkey and we're going to make the rectangle the same size as his body. Pretty straightforward there. Now I like to work off to the side a little bit so I'm going to press the selection tool, move it over to the side. And to get the same color, it's I for eyedrop, or just click on the eyedropper icon there, and then eyedrop his color, and that will make your color or your square the same color. We still need to add an outline, and in Illustrator it's called a stroke. So click on the stroke icon, make sure that it's in front, then click on the color button below it, that will tell the computer that you want to give it a color. At the moment it's white, so we're going to click on that. You can, in fact, if you've got the eyedropper already armed, then you can uh, shift click and it will make the background or the stroke black, okay? If you come up to the top here, you can see there's a little stroke menu and we're going to increase the weight of the stroke about four millimeters. If yours is set to points, PT, uh, pixels, then it's about 10, 11 or 12 pixels thick. Okay, so at the moment we have our square and it's looking pretty good. Now we're going to add the eyes. The eyes is simply an ellipse. So if you do it over the top of the character there, then it's a bit more simple, so just do that, and then I drop the black. We don't need an outline, so just doing it like that is fine. Zoom in a bit if you like, and you can stretch it to fit, and then Command C, Command V to copy and paste, and pop that right over the top. So now we have two, and you can simply move that across the pink line will tell you that it's centered and that is in line with the other ones if you want to drop it in the same spot. So that looks pretty good. Now we're going to use a new tool here called the pen tool. The hotkey is P 
or you can click on this one here, not the one with the line coming out of it, that's the curvature tool. We're using the pen tool. So click on the end of the line. It's important that you take your finger off the trackpad and then slide it across, otherwise you end up with it warping and doing these funny things, which we don't want it to do just yet. So click, click, and click. So we're only clicking at the start of the curve, the middle of the curve, and the end of the curve. Try and maintain that. If you do multiple clicks, it just makes it harder to make the curve the exact same curve that you want, okay? Now, we're going to come up here and click on uh, direct selection. Just like the selection tool, the direct selection allows you to modify uh, the shape. The selection tool allows you to move the whole shape quite easily, but the direct selection tool has the added bonus of allowing you to manipulate a specific anchor point, just like that. Okay, now we're going to do that first, change it to a curve. So click on the anchor point you want to modify, click on the curve, and then drag the handle until it fills the line, just like that. Okay, now you can see we've got a fill in there, which we don't want. So because it's black and white, you can simply just flick this swap fill and stroke, shift X is the hotkey, or click on this little arrow, and that will uh, allow you to flip it from nothing to uh, black. Now, at this point, we're going to give it a little bit more thickness, okay? So if you don't have the stroke icon there, this is the menu for stroke, so click on that, and you can increase the weight again to three or four millimeters. Now, as we move it across, you might notice, and don't forget to sel select the direct, oh, sorry, the selection tool, not the direct selection tool. You might notice that we have these square caps on the end. We wanna make them round. So go back to the stroke, make sure that your menu is open by clicking on the show options tab. And then the cap is currently a butt cap or a square cap. We want to change it to round. If you click on that, you'll notice that they pop to a round end. Okay. The next thing, we're going to use the same tool, the pen tool, which is this one. Start off the end. We're going to make it a little bit longer just because it's easier to move and put in place when we want to move it over to our character. So start out here, click in the center of the corner and only one click per curve. So at the very end, and you can see we're making a really kind of abstract version, almost like a star as opposed to a four leaf clover. <coughs> and make sure that all the curves and dots are in the, about the right spot. And there's a few things we need to do here to tidy it up. If you select the direct selection tool, you will be able to select the anchors that we need to change. Hold the shift key and you can click on the points or the ends of the fingers, only four fingers that we need to select. Please don't select any of the other anchors because we want them to maintain their shape as corners. If you come up here to the convert section, you can convert from corner to smooth or smooth to corner. So click on convert selected anchor points to smooth and now you can see they're relatively smooth. If you grab these little handles, they look like antennas off, off an insect, you can make the curves a bit more pronounced, which is a good idea just to get the same kind of shape as Roger Hargreaves has drawn. So pull them around and you can see down in these corners, we're getting some funny angles and funny shapes. And I'll show you how to fix that. Just like we did with the uh, smile, we're going to fix that up. So make sure it's on round cap. Uh, and round corner or round join and you can see them click into the new shape. Now I'm not a big fan of doing everything twice so what we can do move this into position and then we're just going to go <coughs> command copy command V we have our new hand there. Now there's a couple of ways to do this the, to get it really clean click on object and transform and reflect and that will make the exact mirror image of the hand and then just put them in. If you select, if you don't have a fill or you don't have anything on there, let's say it's just white at this stage, 
then you can uh, eye drop the rectangle that we did at the start and that will give it the color and the outline that we want. Okay. Now, we're going to go back to using the Shape Builder tool. If you select these two, or if you select all of them, we're going to make a mistake deliberately just to show you what the issue is. Now, I've selected everything. I've chosen the Shape Builder tool. I draw my line through. I'd be very careful not to touch the eyes or the mouth. But what you'll find is it has affected the eyes especially. Okay. Now, to avoid that, I'm going back now. To avoid that, just select the shapes that you need. So make a marquee around just the arm and the body using the selection tool, and then hold the shift key and you can select the other arm as well. Now you're safe to do it because the other things aren't selected. So shift M, draw a line through the hands and the body, and you can see now they are attached. Now because we did the hands after we did the eyes and the mouth, they have uh, jumped forward in our layers so we're going to command X and then command B to pop that behind all right now the feet are exactly the same I do the feet separately because we want to have that line there that gap between them but we're just using the pen start it up nice and high click 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 and that's a pretty rough version of the feet but we'll fix that up so now we're going to go A or direct selection tool, click on the toe, okay, convert that to round and then drag, oops, drag the handle down to fit that line and up. There we go, there's our foot. Doesn't need to be perfect, just similar, okay, because we're not trying to perfectly copy it. But what we can do now, make sure you have the selection tool selected and then select the foot, command copy, command V, and we're going to object, transform, reflect. That's good, and then move that into position. Okay, the, a few things here that we can do, we can make it a bit wider, because this one is a little bit wider. Oops, I missed the handle. There we go. And we can bring this down a bit because it's a little bit lower. And that looks pretty good to me. So I'm happy with that. It's really important here that before we start moving things, you want to make sure that these are as close as you can get without them crossing over. Okay, so click on this one and move it across and then double check that you haven't crossed them over. Okay, so get them close but not crossing over. And then we can now move them over to our other character. Get the spacing as good as you can. Good. And then Shift M to pull up the direct selection tool. And then we're going to join these together. Okay, so that way the legs are attached, but we still have that little gap there. If they crossed over, then that would all become one piece. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. The last thing that we're going to attempt today is the hat. Again, we're going to use the pen tool. Okay, I start with the crown of the hat rather than the, um, the flap, I guess, or the, what do you call that? The visor. So we're going to start down here. Click, click at the top of the curve, the bottom of the curve, the top of the curve, the bottom of the curve. And there is a little curve here. So we are going to finish off with a slight curve there. And then back to the direct selection tool, we're going to select all these and we're going to convert them to uh, smooth. There we go. That's looking pretty good. If you forward slash, then eye drop, you're going to get the green. Okay. Then bring this in front, shift select to make it a black outline. Okay. We probably need to bump the weight up again to three or four and then the last thing we're going to do is our brim so click uh, click oops click and click and then 
We don't need a fill for the brim, so we're going to get rid of the fill by clicking on the forward slash. Make sure the fill is in front, and then select the middle anchor, convert it to smooth, and then pull on the handles to match the curve. There we go. Now the other thing you can do is, you don't want to join them together, but you can group them. So Command G will group them, and now you can move the whole unit as one. Uh, you might notice that we need to do the cap end as well. Uh, okay, so go up to stroke, change it to cap uh, round. There we go. Cool, so that's done, really. I'm going to bring this a bit lower. That is Mr. Strong, looking pretty strong with a fancy hat. Uh, it'd be great to see you guys finish that this lesson. Oh, I need to change that one as well. Perfect. Okay, so good luck. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. <coughs>